Okay guys, this video is one that I've been thinking about and working towards making for a long time. Now I've never gotten any particular requests to make a video like this, but I'm making this video of response because every year I hear of so many people wandering off into the woods in the middle of the winter and ending up freezing to death. And I really never like that because in my opinion, especially with the technology that exists to this day, or in this day and age, this is really an unacceptable or unnecessary way to die because there's so many ways to prevent and effectively insulate your body from even the most extreme colds. There's a lot of technology out there to prevent dying from the cold, so you just got to know what to look for and I think what honestly gets so many people in that bad position where they do end up dying is not so much that they can't afford or they don't want this equipment, it's that they are not aware that it exists, so it's more of an ignorance thing. So I'm going to be showing you guys what I wear and how I stay warm when I bushcraft at negative 20, negative 10, the colder temperatures, and even talking about how effective this stuff is at negative 50 because most of it is very effective even at negative 50. Maybe not in the bushcrafting role, but in just being outside. So the first step, and we're going to build our way up to the extreme cold gear, but it all starts with your base layer. You're a dead man walking if you don't get a really strong or really effective means of controlling your internal temperature at the base layer. So for me, the easiest way to do this is what you guys see here. So we're going to start off with the head first, and then we're going to move down to the feet, which is that. So the first thing I use for my base layer for my head is just an Under Armour, and I really forget the name for this, but it's like some kind of, uh, what is it, infrared uh, tactical face mask, whatever. It's a really dumb name, but even though it has a dumb name, these things are super effective. I know you guys have probably seen them if you've watched my video videos at all in the winter time. I'm almost always wearing this, and that's because it works very well, whether it's 20 above or negative 20 or 30 below thing works very well which actually surprises me because it is extremely thin but just because it's thin does not mean that it doesn't work it does an excellent job at retaining body heat so this is an Under Armour um, infrared tactical face mask whatever I really like it because it works very well and not just that but it also has this kind of it's hard to see when it's not on someone or on someone's face but this essentially is a hinge right here and what that allows you to do is to basically either make this a full covering face mask or just a neck gaiter and you can drop this kind of face part down so that it's just covering your neck so whether it's going to be worn in warmer or colder temperatures this works well as a neck gaiter or a full face mask so that's my first or that's my base layer for my face now my base layer for my body I think this is yeah, this is my shirt. So this is a uh, Under Armour, and this is their base layer, or their base series, base layers, and this is their 4.0. This is their cold gear. This is their most extreme cold weather base layer that they make, and these, I can speak from personal experience and from many other people, that these base layers work very well. They keep you so warm, and even, like I said, a negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, you know, of course, if you're wearing the proper equipment over it, these base layers will keep you very toasty warm. So once again, using a base layer 4.0 for the top, and or using the base layer 4.0 upper and lower, so for pants and a shirt, that's what I use. And then next, I'm not particularly picky when it comes to these, but I just like wearing a very high or heavy weight wool sock. These are 75%, but I have anywhere from 80 to 90 to 75% wool socks. Really, any of them get the job done at that weight. You just want to make sure that you're wearing a very high level and thicker wool sock. So these are definitely majority wool uh, blend socks. So that is what I use for base layer and optimally if you structure your base layer right you shouldn't have any exposed skin wearing all of this other than your hands and just a little bit at your eyes unless you're wearing it as a neck gaiter and obviously it'll have your face but none of your body should really be exposed and that's very important because at colder temperatures especially when it's windy that cold will find any way in and if you have an exposed layer of skin or exposed part of skin 
at, even at those temperatures, you know, with clothes, that wind will find its way in and you will get chilled. So with this, with these base layers, they should entirely cover. There should always be overlaps. So, you know, your socks should be overlapped with your base layer lower. Your base layer lower should overlap with your base layer upper. And your base layer upper should overlap with your face mask, at least at the neck portion. So that way there's absolutely no skin showing. There's no skin, you know, uh, coming through at any part. So once again, starting back off at the head. For me, this is where the, the head apparel pretty much stops unless I'm doing anything specific where I might need a helmet or whatnot. Uh, I'm just going to wear a, uh, a little Carhartt uh, beanie cap. These things really work for me in conjunction with the Under Armour face mask that I just showed. This works really well regardless to whether it's 20 above, 30 above, 40 above, or whether it's negative 40. Um, my head's not particularly picky, so this works in, con in complement or in tandem with my face mask just fine. Moving down to the body, this is where things get a little bit different and where you have to kind of find for yourself what's going to work. Uh, in warmer temperatures, like I said, 20 above uh, to 10 above, I tend to wear a sport shirt because my insulative base layers do enough job at thermoregulation that I don't really need any more additional layering to help keep the heat in really. So at this level, I just wear a breathable sport shirt like Carhartt sport shirts or Under Armour sport shirts. That's generally what I'll wear. Now, if it does get colder, I tend to wear a thick flannel and that just helps kind of build uh, on the insulation, but it's nothing too crazy. Then moving down to legs. First part of the pants or the legs, of course, after the insulation or base layer is a usually my go-to Carhartt cargo pants. Now, I will usually in more temperate weathers that don't have too wet or sloppy of a snow, I'll usually just wear these, which are flannel lined um, Carhartts because they keep me really warm, including even down into some of the colder temperatures, so long as I don't have to worry about snow getting the pants wet. Because of course, this is only one layer and these are not particularly water resistant. So when I can get away with it, I'll just wear these, but if I can't just get away with those or if it is too cold, I'll usually step up to running snow pants with them. And once I run snow pants, it alleviates all the water problems. These do a great job at shedding off water and really any other concerns that I would have. And moving back down to finally the feet. Now the feet, once again, don't have necessarily anything special, so aside from the socks that we already mentioned. But what I wear for boots or for shoes, uh, religiously, whether it's 20 above, all the way down to negative 50 is mucklucks. Now I know a lot of people, especially around here, love the bunny boots and the bunny boots are great boots I really have no problems with them however I personally don't like them for two major reasons and the first is that they're very heavy and the second reason is that they are very fallible so with bunny boots they're reliant on essentially a layer of gas or air in between your foot and the elements and should anything pierce that layer of that air or that gas it'll escape and render your boots basically worthless whereas with mucklucks they are tried and true and they're really pretty foolproof not only that they're also easily field repairable so if you do like punch a hole in this you can use shoe goo like you can see here or you can just sew it back together you know through this rubber and this is just canvas and in addition some people may say that uh, mucklucks are not very water resistant and that's true in their out of box form they're not but you can easily treat these with something like nick wax or many other waterproofing agents and while you will have to do that on a semi-regular basis you know it gets you basically the same waterproof effect that bunny boots would have and in addition when you do start going down to your colder temperatures, water starts losing a lot of its actual moisture and it just becomes very dry. So that kind of falls out of like necessity. You don't really need to because the snow is so dry that it's not gonna affect it anyways. And of course on the inside, I have 100% wool liners. So these wool liners mixed with the wool socks provide a very, very comfortable and very warm uh, 
environment for my feet. And like I said, these things, even at negative 50, just keep my feet super warm, especially though negative 20, negative 30 when I'm realistically out. These things keep my feet super warm, absolutely no concerns at all. Core is kind of a finicky place, just like with the shirts, the undershirts that I wear. This is going to vary by temperature. So in the warmer temperatures, so we're talking about you know 20 above, 30 above, down to about negative 10, negative 15. I'm going to wear everything such as you know a flannel, the uh, insulative layer, the base layer that we talked about. And I'm going to wear an Arteryx Beta AR. Now some people may say that this is too thin, that it doesn't work. And for me personally, what I found is that it does work for at least me and once again you may have to do some experimentation and find out what works for you but because these Arteryx jackets do a really good job at not breathing unless you open up their vents uh, they actually keep you very warm and they do have Gore-Tex Pro on the inside so they do have some insulation but from what I've really found is that because they do a good job at keeping everything in and not breathing and letting all that warm out they do work far below or into far colder temperatures than you'd think once again so long as you're using good insulative materials to capture and retain that core body heat in your core this is not going to let that that heat out very easily this thing is so big i can't even put it fully on screen but do trust me there is a full-size parka right about here maybe i can adjust this a little bit better for you guys there we go that might be a, just a little bit better <laughs> so anyways when it starts getting down into the negative 25 negative 30 temperature once again same base layer that base 4.0 you know same thick heavy uh, flannel and then i usually throw on this parka and this parka is very warm it'll keep you warm well into the negative 50 probably even into the negative 60s i don't know i haven't uh, tested at negative 60 but i know that this thing works negative 45 negative 50 very well so when it does get down into the real cold temperatures having a parka like this becomes basically critical uh, for doing any type of just being out in general so anyways that is basically the end i know this has been a comprehensive and a bit longer video maybe a little bit more boring but i hope this video can help at least one person out in knowing what to wear what the proper equipment is for different temperatures and you know you will have to find your own personal system that works for you but a lot of this especially the base layer is very applicable and like I said I know multiple people who run the same base layer that I do very similar to what I do and they love it it works very well for them and you know they work they wear similar uh, clothing to what I wear at the different corresponding temperatures so it's already you're saying Matthew where the heck are the gloves where the heck are the mittens don't worry I didn't forget about them that's what we're gonna be talking about next at positive 20, you know, positive 40, even down to zero, what I usually wear are these mechanics. Uh, just these are their originals, but they're cold weather insulated. So that means they have some thin slate in them and they keep your hands warmer than just normal original mechanics, but they still allow you a lot of dexterity and they're also pretty affordable. Now what I use for mittens and mittens are a little bit more controversial. Like everyone has their own specific loved brand and you know, their own choice. But I will say from my experience, I use Manzella Mastodon mittens and for under a hundred dollars they are probably the best mittens you will find period dot and i know that's a pretty big statement because especially out in the colder temperatures you may not feel like they will work but the mastodon mittens by manzella they use 200 gram or 200 grams of thinsulate and they use 200 grams of synthetic down and that's 400 grams grams overall and I found that those especially mixed with a lighter weight fleece glove on the inside, they work beautifully at keeping your hands warm. Not to mention they also have really nice catches on them, uh, cord catches that you can cinch around your arms. If I can show a glove. You can cinch them around your arms or your sleeves, I should say, so that when you take your mittens off, you're not dropping them or setting them in the snow. They'll just dangle off your sleeve while you know you do whatever you have to do and then you can put your mitten right back on so those are what i choose for gloves and for mittens
often find that if people are complaining about a mitten or a glove not really effectively working, it can be the mitten and glove's fault, especially gloves, but with mittens, it's usually the fault of the wearer. And what I'm saying is, if you have everything like I've shown you, you know, if you're wearing proper base layers, if you're wearing proper, you know, in-between layers and proper outer layers, and you're keeping your body, your core, your legs, your feet, your head, and your arms warm, and they're circulating hot blood, you usually will not have a problem keeping your hands warm. It's usually you have a problem keeping your hands warm when you have a breakdown or deterioration, when another part of your body, whether that's your face, arms, legs, uh, you know, head, when those aren't being kept warm, your body's diverting hot blood to them as well as to your hands. And so when your body's split between diverting hot blood to one part of your body and another part of your body, it's not going to be able to as effectively direct as much hot blood to your hands. And that's gen generally where you see people saying, oh, this mitten sucks or that mitten sucks because they're not properly insulating their bodies. I've had very good experience with many mittens because I've had a very strong, you know, core system of things that are keeping my arms, head, legs, feet warm. That means all that hot blood is directed straight to your hands. And so I haven't really had a problem with many mittens, but I will say that if you are on the cooler side and your body doesn't produce as much hot blood, I would certainly encourage the Manzella Mastodons because they're only right around 50 bucks and they are a very heavy duty mitten. Anyways guys, that is all for my extensive and comprehensive winter gear loadout. Anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed this longer video. I know it's a bit boring, but it's certainly informative. Anyways guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.